it's train driver vlog number legs 11 and today while train driving is a lifestyle choice and not just a job why you must stay hidden and how much trouble can a bread roll really get you into welcome to dad Rail. Hello and welcome. For those of you who are new here, my name's Richard Evans and I'm a train driver based in the south of England. Now, just before we jump into the video, all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own and may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or even associated with. Furthermore, names and places may have been changed to preserve confidentiality. Don't forget guys, if you do go on to like this video, then please do hit that like button and also consider subscribing to Dad Rail. Also, I'm trying to reach 2000 subscribers by the end of the year, so your support is really appreciated. So if you do like this video and you think you know other people that are like it, then please, please do share this video with all your friends. So working as a train driver is obviously very different to your normal nine to five. In actual fact, I'd go as far to say that train driving, it almost becomes a bit of a lifestyle. The way you have to organise your family life and your home life around the job means train driving is more of a, it's a lifestyle rather than just a job. Now, most train driving jobs are shift work. Now, I know that many people work shifts and people that do will be able to uh, relate to most of this video, but shift working in a train driver sense is a little more um, irregular than some jobs. My beautiful wife, Daniela, for example, who's been in several of my videos, especially the ones in Portugal, do go and check those out, always plug. Um, she works in the NHS and although she does shift works, her, her shift start times um, tend to be very regular. For example, an early shift is seven till seven and a late shift, a night shift is seven till seven. However, with train driving, although you're doing shifts, your shift times and your shift patterns are not regular. Shift work on the railway is generally divided up into three categories. You've got your early shifts, your middle or late shifts and your night shifts. Again, I'm being quite general here. Different companies have different rules and different, different terms for their shifts. But whereas on um, in a regular shift work job, your shifts tend to start at the same time. So as we said earlier, if you're on an early shift, it's seven till seven. If you're on a late shift, it's seven till seven. On the railway, within your sort of early weeks and your late weeks, your start times can vary uh, tremendously. For example, if we take a, a typical late week, I could be starting on the Monday 12.35 to 22.05. Tuesday I could then be 15.27 to I-115. And then the next day I might be 13.24 till 20.57. So even though you're on earlies or lates for the weeks, your shift times tend to be all over the place. And this has a massive impact on your life and try, trying to arrange things such as um, childcare, doctor's appointments. Uh, one example, I was looking at doing a course in, in videography, which I clearly need to do, as you can tell from this video. Um, but with work commitments, I sort of just, just couldn't um, commit to doing that, which was a real shame. If you want to know why the times are so precise as well, then check out, I think it was the second vlog I recorded, Staying On Time, where I talk about why the shift starts at uh, 15.34 and not 15.30, for example. So that being said, most companies do have um, set rotations, set rosters. So you can normally look ahead to see what shifts you're working, um, what rest days you've got, for example. But due to unforeseen circumstances, you could have weekend engineering works, you could have line closures, um, staff sickness. All that sort of thing means that your shifts can be changed at short notice and, and quite often are. Um, there are some safeguards in place. They're normally contractual safeguards as to how much notice companies have to give you if they're gonna to wanna to change a shift, but it does vary from company to company. And with the sort of, um, the, the almost fate looming over the, your, your shift could be changed at last minute. Again, it makes, it makes it really awkward to sort of arrange your life and arrange appointments and things. Now, as I just said, all companies are different in the way they allocate their work and the way the shifts work. In my workplace, for example, we're on a, um, a rotation, a roster. Um, there's, there's something like 40, 40 something lines on this roster. And generally we move down the roster uh, week by week. The good thing with that is you can look ahead, you can plan um, what shift you're on, what rest days you've got, providing your shifts don't change, of course. However, when the timetable changes and the needs of the service change, so does the roster. So you could have that worked out so you know exactly when your rest days are, you get a timetable change, the roster changes, and your rest days move. Again, it makes it really, really awkward to kind of work things out and work out where you're going. That's sort of why I say that train driving is is more of a lifestyle choice because you have to arrange your life around the job. One of the major drawbacks of shift work is fatigue and anyone that works shifts, I'm sure you will definitely know this, but it's something that affects train drivers in a large way. Train driving is a very mentally demanding job. Check out my previous vlog number 10, how hard is it to drive a train? 
always plug. Um, and it's, it's a problem that train operating companies, TOX and freight operating companies, FOX, um, are well aware. And lots of rosters are produced with fatigue in mind. As a general rule of thumb, as weeks go on, shifts should get later. So if you're starting at 5 o'clock Monday morning, you should be 5.30 Tuesday, 5.45 Wednesday, so on and so forth. But it isn't always possible to do that due to um, roster constraints. But due to the irregular working, the irregular shifts, I often find myself sleeping um, at irregular times, which is really not very good for family life. And of course, eating at irregular times, which is how you get the um, the patented train driver stomach, which you can't see because it's a bit below the camera line there. But, uh, it's all to do with your fatigue and your lifestyle habits. It's got nothing to do with the, uh, the bacon rolls in the station buffet. So what, one of the best descriptions um, I ever heard was that being a train driver is like permanently being jet lagged. And I'm sure most people that, that do shift work will be able to uh, emphasize with that. There are lots of safeguards and protection in place uh, for train drivers with regards to fatigue, tiredness and, and rostering. In fact, they don't just apply to train driving, they apply to uh, all safety critical railway staff. Following the tragic accident in 1988 uh, near Clapham Junction, in which 35 people were tragically killed, there was uh, a report released after that incident by uh, Sir Anthony Hidden. And one of the recommendations on there was uh, recommendation for um, working time, the maximum time that safety critical workers are allowed to work. These regulations were adopted and they become known as the Hidden 18 recommendations. That's because they were recommendation number 18 on the Hidden report. And these regulations forbid safety critical workers um, from working more than 12 hours consecutively. They ensure that you have to have a 12 hour minimum rest period between shifts. They also dictate that you can't work more than 13 days on the trot or you can't work more than 72 hours in any weekly period. Most companies though have gone a step further with this and sort of adopted their own uh, regulations. For example, in my company, the, the maximum working day is set a lot less than, than 12 hours. Although you can work 12 hours, there's a company agreement which sets that a lot less. As drivers though, it's very important that you don't solely rely on the company and the managers to, to roster that to make sure you stay within those regulations. The Hidden 18 regulations are something you're taught on your um, on your initial train driver training and why managers and companies are very, very good at rostering within those. You want to make sure as a train driver that you're staying within those. You could get a, a phone call at the last minute asking you to do an overtime shift or something and it could fall you foul of those regulations. If you were involved in an incident in a, a, a SPAD or a, God forbid an accident or something like that and it was found out that you were foul of the Hidden 18 regulations, you're going to be in quite a lot of trouble as well as your employer. So it's very, very um, very necessary that you, you have a good understanding of those regulations and that you stay within them. So it's Tuesday morning and you get a text from one of your mates asking you around for a barbecue on Saturday afternoon. You're off work Saturday, but you're early turn Sunday. So you're all good, you accept the invitation. Saturday comes around, the party's in full swing and somebody offers you an ice cold beer. We say Sagres because I absolutely love Sagres and I have a certain uh, affection for Portugal Check out my videos that I made in Portugal, honestly. Now, as well as having to leave the party at 8pm 8, 8, 8 as you've got to be up at 4 the next morning for work, you now have to refuse to accept a beer because the railway, and rightly so, has very, very strict rules on, um, on drugs and alcohol and the limits that you can take. For example, the current um, drink driving limit for cars is 35 micrograms per 100 millilitres of breath. The railway limit is just 13, that's absolutely tiny, 13 micrograms. And all railway staff are subject to um, random tests. And if you have one of these random tests and you blow over the limit, you can honestly, you can kiss goodbye to a, to a 50,000 pound a year plus job. It's zero tolerance, the unions will not defend you, no one will defend you. If you're over the drink limit, you're gone. It's as simple as that. And, and I think everyone would agree that's rightly so. But it's not just drink, and alcohol that can get you into big trouble. Obviously recreational drugs are a complete no-no. It's the same principle. If you get caught with recreational drugs in your system, then again, you kiss goodbye to your job. But what a lot of people are quite surprised about and what I was quite surprised about when I started on the railway was prescription medication and over-the-counter medication can also land you in quite a lot of trouble. When you're prescribed medication, you need to declare it to your employer. You need to phone up your employer. You need to get them to check with their occupational health team that you're okay to take this medication while driving. Even over-the-counter medicines, for example, um, cocodamol has codeine in it which makes you tired. You're not allowed to take it while you're train driving. 
So anything, even before you take a paracetamol, you need uh, to phone up, you need to tell them you've had it, you need to declare it. If you don't declare having taken medication, and you have an incident, you get med screened, you get drugs tested, and it's in your system, again, it's something that's not gonna be looked upon favorable. You're gonna be in, in quite a lot of trouble for that. So prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, you have to declare literally everything. If you're taking little blue pills that you've been prescribed for certain dysfunctions, then uh, I just imagine that'd be quite an embarrassing conversation, but we're not even gonna go there. So what about the bread roll you ate at the barbecue? Well, that was covered in poppy seeds and uh, you're probably gonna be okay because you need to eat quite a lot of poppy seeds, but poppy seeds can show as a false positive for um, opiates, although, like I said, you would need to eat quite a lot. In fact, it probably wasn't even worth mentioning, but it just made a, a, a catchy sort of bit in the intro, so I thought I would. It's a bit of a different vlog for you today, a bit sort of uh, a general and sort of lifestyle stuff there rather than sort of railway rules and stories and stuff. My next video is going to be on uh, on leaves on the line, so we're kind of going to get, get back to that in the next video. Anyway, you may remember in my previous uh, vlog, I asked you to identify what this sign right here means. Well done to everyone who commented. This is a signal post telephone. Um, you can see by the, the zebra stripes on the sign there. And the number indicated indicates the amount of time a driver should wait before contacting the signaller if he or she is stopped at a red signal. For example, if it has a five on it, you wait five minutes. If it has a zero, you contact the signaller immediately. Now, as I said in my next video, we're gonna be talking about um, leaves on the line, and that is actually a huge problem for train drivers. I'm gonna sort of talk about why we can't just scrape them off with a scraper, or why we can't just have a big brush or vacuum clean, all those sorts of, all those sorts of things that people think you can do. We're gonna talk about why you can't do those. And as it's quite a seasonal vlog, I'm gonna set you a seasonal sign. See if you can identify what this sign up here means. Answers in the comments section, and of course, I'll be revealing the correct answer in the next video. Don't forget, if you do have any questions about this video or being a train driver in general, then post them in the comment section below, or you can contact me on my social media channels, which should be on the screen down there for you now. As people who comment regularly will know, I do always try and reply to your comments in the best possible way. Now, I tell you what guys, why not click right here to subscribe to Dabra right now, or you can click here or here to watch some of my other videos. If you have liked this video, please do hit that like button and also press here to subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, create, share and inspire.